This is the third video in a four part series looking at the real estate market here in Surrey, BC. And today's focus is on townhouses. Townhouses are where the working class families are almost forced to buy into. So if you're thinking of moving to Surrey on a budget and have a family, this is probably the video for you. And if you're planning to move within the city of Surrey and need help, you can book a call with me right now using the link in the description below at a time that works best for you. And with that out of the way, and after you subscribe and click the like button for the YouTube algorithm, we can hop into the stats provided by the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board so you can better understand where we've been and where we're headed starting here with the hpi hpi is the house price index this is uh, a mathematical number that equates to the average townhouse across the city of surrey so this isn't north surrey south surrey this is just the average townhouse across the entire city of surrey i find these to be the most accurate numbers because somebody smarter than me came up with them and they are not just a strict calculation which can really limit your perspective on the marketplace so we can see we go back to 2005 when hpi was started two hundred and thirty two thousand dollars. if we all had a time machine we go back and buy as many as we possibly could at the peak of the market that was almost a million dollars 979.5 was the top popping here into the three-year window give you a better idea of where we're at right now so 979 as i said was the top then interest rates go up it's funny it's 797 where the market bottoms out here in january and now we are back up to 890 so let's say we're down 200 000 and now we're back up 100 000. so we are basically 50 percent as detached houses were believe it or not about 50 percent of the way back through the recovery in prices for those people that bought at the top so the people that are still underwater today are likely the people that bought in february march april and may of 2022 everybody else has been bailed out by the system now a lot of people as i mentioned in the other videos like median price it is just a calculation i don't like it uh, but we're going to focus on that i will point out that year over year townhouses in the city of surrey are still down 1.2 percent median however they are up so if you are one of those guys that likes median price you have to admit that we have recovered over the last 12 months now you will see that apparently the drop happened from February 2022 until August 2022, and then it bounced around really, really flat. So there's a good chance that if you bought in August 2022 or since then, you're actually in the positive and doing quite well. We did have a bit of a slowdown here in the summer in May, sorry, and now we have taken back off again. Now, median price is just the middle selling price of all the transactions that happen. So let's look at average selling price, which is a little bit better representation. You'll see that it's just as jagged as well. The market actually topped out in February, not March. And then we did see a resurgence in November. And believe it or not, when we did the detached market, it was actually November that was the bottom of the market while well, townhouses came back a little bit. So that could mean that people were shifting away from the unaffordability and interest rates with detached and they actually shifted into the townhouse market. And then in December, it bottomed out a little bit more. And now we have seen the recovery up 1.4% since this time last year now let's look at the overall number of sales you'll see that sales were crazy high again in april two two and a half years ago sometime in there there were so many sales happening it was crazy and then those bottomed out here in december which you would expect december should be your slowest month with people doing you know christmas and vacation and whatever else they're doing only 79 townhomes sold in december of 22 and now we are back up to a much more respectable 280. I'm going to scale out on this so you can see historically where we are at. The number of townhomes selling historically, if you look at that 280, is generally high. Now, that could be the fact that there are just more townhomes now. Townhomes were not a super, super popular thing, easy for me to say, before you know, the kind of early 2000s. That's when the townhouses really started to become a hot commodity for families because of their affordability. But look, we are way above these averages of all these years of having 180 or 200 sales. And we are, of course, not back to the craziness and the mayhem of the pandemic or even uh, the 2016 market, which was crazy hot as well but they are a heck of a lot higher than historical norms. New listings coming to the marketplace. They have actually, again, like everything else, with the other asset classes, they have turned downwards this last month, which is not necessarily a good sign. I would love to get back up to these 
average listings of, you know, maybe somewhere around 400. And it looks like we're peaking there and now coming back down. So I don't think that's a good thing in the overall scheme of things. However, with sales keeping up, it's seemingly here in townhouses. Let's look at the active listings and well, they're starting to go sideways. They are not mounting like the detached homes are. Detached home general inventory is going up and currently the June numbers are up a little bit, but not nearly where we are kind of hoping they would be. Personally, I'd love to see it up another 100 or 200 active listings on the market to give buyers more choice, but that's just currently not where we're at. If you look at it year over year, the active listings on the marketplace compared to this same time last year, and that was a tough time in the market, I know, but there's 42% less listings on the market. Switching over to consumption rate or what we call sales to actives ratio. I'm going to zoom back in on this one. You're going to see that it's, again, it's above historical norms. These historical norms, I'm going to put it probably right at about 25%, which is a very balanced market. We are way, way up. Now, of course, we're not going to be in this 170% consumption. I don't even know how that number can be real. It's basically chewing up previous months of inventory, but really anything over 33%. So anything over about this line right here, I'm not lying, this point on the map right here is a seller's market, meaning prices are going up. March, April, May, June, all over 50% consumption, meaning that townhouses are extremely hot. Percentage of original Asking price is obviously going back up. Townhomes, just like detached homes, are starting on average to sell over the asking price. So if you're one of those people that are looking to negotiate off of the asking price rather than go over, you're going to want to pay attention to when we get to days on market because you're going to want to see what type of properties or how long they're staying, sitting on the market so you can negotiate off those ones that are sitting on the market for too long. Let's go back to December when you could hopefully negotiate four and a half. Well, what is that? Five, almost five and a half percent off of the asking price. And thankfully, we are nowhere near the 113% of asking that you would have likely had to have paid almost a year and a half ago. Price per square foot, much more relevant in townhomes because you're comparing often stratas with many, many units. But you're going to see that we have started to kind of flatten out there. Uh, nothing as high as the 653 from the peak of the market, but we are now kind of finding a happy medium, thankfully, maybe at 565 or $564 per square foot. And days on market is plummeting, as we would expect when consumption rate goes up. So what this tells me is uh, the average property selling 17 days on market, when you start seeing a property on the market for three or four or five weeks, those are the opportunities to get the price down. Don't try and go into a fresh on the market listing and try and beat them up on price. It's probably not very realistic. Look at this. January 2020, the average townhome took a month and a half to sell. And let's look at that where that is for historical norms. Again, anything pre-2016, look at how long you would have to sit on the market. Two and a half, three months, basically three months. This one here is 83 days, January of 2015 with a townhouse. Now we are back down to like 17 days and often these are being held off offers. So they should actually be shorter if we were looking to accept offers immediately, but agents are holding off offers, meaning that the average days is actually skewed upward slightly. There you go. That is what townhouses are doing in the city of Surrey. If you need help either selling your townhouse or finding a townhouse within the city of Surrey, or the entire Fraser Valley, you can go ahead and book a call with me right now using the link in the description below. And if you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe, click the like button before you go, and we'll see you in a couple of days.